everyone. I'm taking my mask off because I am now the only one in the room. It's me, Jacob, again from Midpoint Library Middletown, and I'm going to be talking to you again about a couple board games. So, the one we're going to be talking about today is Marvel Codenames. I love all of the codename games. I started to play with the first codenames, and now that they've made a whole bunch of these different variants based on different things that you may be in the fandom of. Um, the game's just getting big, gotten bigger. It's brought more people into it. It's super fun, super easy to play. So let's look at this. This game is playable by two to eight players. I really recommend if you can get at least four, even more, this game just gets better the more people you can get on a team. It's good for ages nine and up, and it only takes about 15 minutes to play. You can even go quicker depending on how good you get at the game. So the first thing you're going to do is go through all of these cards, make a five by five board. I've assembled one with a lot of different heroes from the Marvel Universe because this is Marvel code names, but you also get some that'll have more abstract concepts. And um, we'll get into why that is, how it makes the game a little bit more difficult when one of these is just war or justice. So, the way you get it set up is you make a 5x5 five five grid. Then you're going to take one of these key cards. So, to set up the game, you're going to have two players called the directors. One director will be from each team. So, if you have four players, there'll be a director on each team and a player. The directors, even though they're on separate teams, are going to sit together at one end of the table. The other teams are going to sit together opposite from them. If you have six players all together, you're going to have two directors and then two players on each team. The directors get to view the key card. And the key card is going to have different blue and red dots. These are going to correspond to the five by five grid of these pieces, these tokens that you've laid down. There's also going to be this gold one. That is the Thanos Assassin card, and you're gonna to wanna to avoid that because you will lose the game if you flip it over. So, once you have it, the directors will take turns. They will look at this. They have the same map, and so the same pieces are either her red for the Hydra team or blue for the shield team. And then they have to get their teammates to guess the different tokens which belong to them using only one word. For instance, let's see, it looks like Doctor Strange in this bottom corner is one of the Hydra team cards. So the player could go magic. Now you'll always say one word and a number. The number can be anything between 1 to 25, although that wouldn't really be helpful, but you're going to say all right, looking at this map, there is one card we have that has a magic user in it. So you're going to say magic one. And then your teammates are going to have to take a guess on who the magic one card is. Now, as an example of how magic came, how, where this game gets difficult, Doctor Strange may be magic, but we also have Mysterio. So they may go, oh, hey, there's one magic card. We guess Mysterio. Now Mysterio on this token is a shield agent card. And so he gets covered up by a shield token and the Hydra team ends their turn. Then it moves over to the shield team. They're going to give a different instruction to try and get people to guess their tokens. Once one team has covered up all of their tokens, they win. If any team accidentally guesses the assassin card, which in this case is going to be one, two, the Black Panther card, they automatically lose. So you need to be able to guess around this to try and only find your pieces and not accidentally guessing the assassin or the enemy team's pieces. There's also going to be some blank, blank cards. In this case, it would be Star-Lord, Mary Jane, oop, nope, Star-Lord, the Hulk, Spider-Man, Daredevil, Drax, Luke Cage, oh, what's his name again? And Kane. 
Those are neutral cards. They neither be they belong to neither the shield team or the Hydra team. If somebody guesses those, they get covered up by a neutral card token saying no team has got points for this one, and then whatever team guessed them, their turn ends. It's not quite as bad as guessing an enemy teammate's card, but it doesn't really do you any favors. If I was to say, let's try and find a good example that will cover multiples. The ideal that you want to be able to do is find a way to give a clue to your team that can cover multiple characters. In this case, Kingpin and the Vulture are both going to be Hydra team member, member cards. So the Hydra team director is going to want to get their players to pick both of these if possible. So they need to find a word that will get their their teammates to choose these. So let's see. Looking here, they could use the word villain too, but there's a chance that their team could choose Venom over here for villain. There's also a couple more villains like the Green Goblin over here that's also a shield team card. So instead, they might look at this and they might go bald too. Now Kingman's, Kingpin's bald, Vulture's bald, and also Drac Drax is bald, so they could get mixed up on that one, but it increases the chances that their team members will go Kingpin, and then they'll go, yes, you've got one, cover that up with Hydra, and because they got one correct, they can then keep guessing with the clues they've been given. So then they might go, okay, Vulture, and they go, oh, yes, we got two in this round gets you a little bit closer to winning a little bit faster. It's a great game of strategy. It's a great game of how you can give clues to help your teammates, and it's also a good game to try and play as you listen to the clues that the other team is getting. Maybe that team goes bald, too, and you go, okay, if I'm looking at this and I see he, we've got these two that are bald, I can kind of eliminate those if I'm shield team and go, I don't want to pick these. I think these belong to the Hydra team. Once you get to the very end stages, there's fewer tokens available. The clues can get a little bit harder to come up with. So you can remember only ever use one word and a number. So we have two cards that are bald. We, maybe I'm trying to get my team to guess for the shield team, me. Ant-Man and Iron Man. So I'm going to do metal. Metal two. And they are going to think, all right, what pieces on here are metal? And there's two of them that I need to choose for my team. Now looking at this for different metal pieces, Ant-Man looks metal, Iron Man looks metal, Maybe Captain America with his metal shield? Mm, possibly. Star-Lord's got a metal mask. Thor's covered in metal armor. This is where the game can get a little bit inside of your head. You need to find the best clue to give your teammates so that they can make the best choice. Super fun game. I cannot recommend this enough. Very quick to set up and play. Check this out. We have a whole bunch of different options from Marvel to Disney. Bring it home be the hero of your night as you, your friends, or your family sit down and play this awesome game. Thanks so much. I hope you enjoy this one. It is one of my favorite games, so give it a try. Let us know how you like it. Bye.